and welcome to the Prompt introduction video. My name is Ola Draper, CTO for COP. Uh, and the product we're looking at today is the TP-Link Omada Hardware Controller VPN Router. Yeah, a lot in there to digest. Uh, so basically, uh, yep, yeah, it's a router, but it's also a VPN router, so you can put it onto your own VPN, or you can use a third-party VPN. Uh, it's got PoE ports on there as well, so again, it supports the standard PoE, including PoE Plus. So again, it can power higher powered PoE devices, such as those Pantel zoom cameras. Um, as well as all that and being a router, it is also got a TP-Link Omada hardware controller built into it. So you probably went from the previous video that I did on TP-Link, we looked at the TP-Link uh, Omada hardware controller. This is what you'd integrate into a TP-Link network, and this allowed you to uh, commission and set up your network. This router has that built into it, so you don't need the little box for this particular one. Now, in addition to actually going through how we actually commission, sort of set one of these up in a very basic setup, uh, we're also going to look at the TP-Link uh, uh, Wi-Fi 6 access point as well. I'm going to integrate that into it. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll get it wired up on the desk, uh, log into it, and just see what we do. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at the actual VPN router itself. So, of course, we're going to apply uh, power to the back of this thing. Um, we've got our list of ports on the front there. We've got our WAN port, which goes back to your, uh, essentially your modem. Uh, and then you've got your various uh, LAN ports down there, which support the PoE function as well. Uh, on the side there, we've got a light that has come powered on. And then we also have the cloud light, which eventually start flashing to say it is uh, essentially ready to be added to the uh, cloud network. Now with this as well, we're going to add onto this is a 10 port switch uh, smart PoE switch by TP-Link as well. It's also an Amada device as well. Uh, so we look at the back, it's got eight port PoE, and then we've got the two SFP ports as well. Just gonna pop that one on there. And of course, we are gonna apply power to the device as well. Just got this the other way around just for the time being. This is usually the back of the device. Of course, that's usually the front, but we're just gonna pop it this way around just for today, uh, just so we can see what ports we're actually uh, dealing with. Uh, now, of course, we need to link these two together. So out of one of the uh, LAN ports on the actual router, into one of the LAN ports on the switch. Okay. Now that we've done that, uh, we're also going to integrate into there, as I mentioned, our EAP610 uh, TP-Link uh, wireless access point with Wi-Fi 6. Now, if we look at the back of this device, it does support PoE as well. So again, we can just connect this straight into our PoE switch and use a PoE. 12 volt power supply it does have that option but today we are just going to use the poe on there so again one cable into our poe switch and then one cable into the actual access point itself now as i mentioned we have got the one wan port down here which goes back to your modem um, so for all intents and purposes we're going to connect a modem into here and then finally, there's only one other cable we need to apply, and that is one to go back to our main local network, which is what my router's which my, my laptop's connected to. And I'm going to use the yellow cable that's going to connect straight back to my laptop. So now they're wired up and all powered up and going. Uh, let's log into the device and just see how we commission it. Okay, so now they're all wired up. As you can see, I've got my uh, router at the bottom there. I've got my 10 port switch, and then into the top there. I've got my EAP610 wireless access point with Wi-Fi 6. Uh, now, if we take a look at this uh, setup at the minute, we've got our, remember our blue cable there, which is going back to our modem, essentially. Uh, in addition, what you see earlier, I've got my yellow cable, which is going back to my local network, which my laptop is connected to. Uh, if we take a look at our actual uh, VPN router, we can see we have got our cloud icon flashing away there. That's telling us that it's, talk into the cloud and it's ready essentially to be uh, commissioned and added to our system. So as you can see on screen right now, I'm at the omada.tplinkcloud.com, the login page for Omada. Uh, I'm just going to log in with my details now. Okay, so on our main login page, you can see there's nothing there. There's nothing added to our system. Um, quite simple, straightforward what to do. If I go to the top right corner and click on add, uh, it's asking us uh, what I want to do. Do I want to register a cloud-based controller? Not do that today. Uh, I'm using a hardware controller, or in this case, an integrated router. Because don't forget, 
this particular router has Omara controller built into it. Uh, so I just click the add button there. And first of all, it's asking make sure the cloud icon is flashing, which we can see on there, that cloud icon is flashing. So that's good. Uh, click next. And now it's asking me to put in the device key. Now this device key is located on the underneath of the controller itself. So I'm just going to move these uh, top two devices, go underneath the actual router and just get the device key that I need. Okay, so now my device's key is in there. Uh, just put in the uh, capture that's there. Make sure I get this uh, correct. Otherwise, it will probably kick me out. We'll try that. Okay, there we go. Control has been added to your Armada Cloud account. Click done. Okay, and we can see our device has now appeared there. So it's Armada Controller uh, uh, D4C 806. And it's got a default IP address and it says my connection is currently uh, local. Uh, there's the actual model number. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is the ER7212PC. Uh, there's the MAC address, serial number, and the device is online. What's noticeable, if I go to the right hand side there, I've got an option for upgrade. Click on the upgrade option, uh, and it's telling me that there's an upgrade available for this router. So, if I just click the upgrade button, click upgrade now, and that is now going to do an upgrade uh, over the air update and update the actual uh, firmware of that router. So what we'll do, as we can see there, it says it's upgrading. We'll just give that a moment to just to complete, and we'll come back to this in a moment. Okay, so that firmware has now uh, updated. Um, the system did reboot, and it's now back online again. This will now give us the ability to click the launch button on the right-hand side. And this is putting us into the controller uh, side of things uh, now. Uh, it is worth noting, in order for this to uh, work as in the controller through the cloud, you will have to have had to configure the router side of things of course before obviously it'll talk to the outside uh, world so it says welcome to use the omada controller so let's get started uh, and it's asking me now to create some uh, details so the co controller main administrator so this is the controller side of things now so uh, again a username which i can use uh, i can put uh, an email address in there for myself and then a password as well Uh, accept terms and conditions, and then click next. Okay, so once I've created a local username and password to log in locally, uh, it's asking I would like to set up the controller, uh, config a new setup, or restore from backup. So I'm going to config a new setup. Um, and it's asking for some details. So it's got their controller name. I could change that if I want to. Uh, country and region, I'm going to change that to uh, obviously where we are, United Kingdom, uh, and obviously our time zone that we uh, have where we are. Click next. Uh, again, it's asking us now for the site name, so the site where this is physically located. Let's give this a name, uh, set the country in which it's in, United Kingdom, uh, and then the device account. So again, I, I can put uh, the, uh, the account details in there. Uh, so as it says there, after a device is adopted, it, the its user and password will be automatically set as the device account and required to be adopting when logging into the device. Fine. So put these details in. And then we can set our application for what this is. So I can say this is an office. And then go next. Now, as we can see, it has found some other devices connected to the controller, i.e. the router. Um, so it has found the EAP610. This is the wireless access point to Wi-Fi 6. Uh, and it's also found our 10-port uh, PoE smart switch. So it says, please, so the devices you'd like to configure integrated routers have been adopted by the controller by default fine so i take both those devices and go next so as you can see here now it's asking us to configure the wan settings the wider area network um so essentially here we've got the online detection interval is set to custom however i can change that if I want to and that's set to sit currently at 10 seconds uh, as it says there online detection result will influence whether load balancing and link backup failures take effect uh, the smaller the online detection interval, the faster load balancing and link backup features will respond. And meanwhile, more detection packets will be set. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and as we go down, it's got other things that we want to set up. So the SFP, the WAN and LAN1, or is it the WAN3? And our load balancing settings as well. Uh, we're just going to go next and skip past this part because we don't need to do anything on this at this stage. Uh, the next bit is asking us now to configure our Wi-Fi details. So our main 
Wi-Fi SSID and a password. So I can call this, for example, uh, let's make this something really simple. So I'll say this is going to be demo room uh, TP link. Uh, and I'll create a password for this wireless network. Now here as well, it's also given the option to, it says you can create uh, an open wireless network for your guests if needed. Yeah, why not? So I can create a guest network. So I'll call this one demo room guest and then go next. And then finally we get the summary about what we have done so far. So finally click finish. Okay, so now that we're in here, as we can see, uh, it says we've got cloud access connected, which of course we're connected by the cloud. But one site, one gateway, one switch, one AP. Uh, as we look below, we can see what our site list is. And we've got the one site on there, which is obviously it says there, one site. So if we click on the site itself, which is just called COP. Uh, we go into there, and this is now putting us into this site. Because don't forget with Armada Cloud, uh, we could have multiple sites that we're looking into and multiple devices. But now we've just dialed into this one particular site, which is, of course, the only one we've actually got. Uh, and then we look at the top there. Uh, we can see all the various uh, details on the top we've got. We've got again, a switch, we've got an AP, we've got a client, and, uh, and so on. Uh, we go to the left-hand side. We can see the statistics. Uh, we can see the uh, site map as well, what's on there. Uh, and we can see our devices as well. So we go into our devices. This is where we can see such as our router, the switch, and we can see the access point as well, uh, as well as any clients as well. Now, if we go down to the bottom, go to settings. This is put into the settings of our network, essentially. Um, so again, a lot of this we've already seen so far, we've already done it, should I say, when we'd read it through the actual wizard earlier on. So we've got the site name, the country name, and everything else so far on here. And again, not a lot that we need to change in this part of it. Uh, we've got the left-hand side, we go to networks, we've got our internet. So this is where you set up your, uh, your WAN settings, essentially, if you were connecting this as a router to a modem. Uh, just for today's purposes, we just connect into our local network, but in reality, this is where you set up your actual uh, uh, router side of things. Uh, we go to LAN, that's our local area network. So we've got our one LAN network on there at the moment, uh, and this is where we could create a new LAN should we wish to. Uh, so we're going to LAN, and just like on our previous video, in our top corner there, uh, this is where we can create things such as different VLANs should we wish to, so we could have different networks and separate them all out. So this is where we did that on there as we did for previously. Likewise, on wireless networks, we've got our WLAN, and we got the two in there that we did when we did it by the wizard. We've got our first one at the top there, which is our uh, demo room TP link, which is our, got our uh, uh, Wi-Fi 6 in there, uh, and then we've also got our guest network in there as well. And if we wanted to edit these, we could do just by clicking the edit symbol, and of course, editing the actual uh, uh, details about these different networks. But we're not just limited to those. We could also add another wireless network in there because you might want multiple wireless networks. If you had created some VLAN, you might say, well, this Wi-Fi network, you want to get access to this part of the network or this, this Wi-Fi network, you want to get access to that part. So again, it's not separating out those networks, which we can do uh, on here as well. Uh, and as we go down, we've got, I think, is our network security. This is where we can create things such as our firewall settings. We want to create any things on there. IP MAC address bindings. This is where we can actually say uh, we want to bind a particular device to a certain IP address. So again, it will now be utilized by another device on there as well. Um, VPN, as I mentioned, this is a VPN router as well. So again, we can put this on a, 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 on a, a VPN. So you can put your own VPN policy in there as well. So again, you're basically creating a virtual private network uh, for you to communicate to other external networks, but privately. Or you might be using a third-party VPN provider, uh, should you wish to. And again, you can put those details uh, in there. So again, as you can see, lots of things that we can do all from here. And we don't necessarily need to be locally on site. As I mentioned, this is using the Omara Cloud. So again, it accesses it from the outside world. Um, again, not just limited to managing one network. This is where you can man manage multiple networks, should you wish. So there we go, everyone. Uh, fairly straightforward, a very brief introduction of how we just log into the device, get it commissioned, and get it set up on our network. Uh, don't forget, there was a previous video which showed you how to do all your VLAN and link aggregation we looked at uh, in the last video. Um, so again, really nifty device if you need a router onto the network and integrating that into a, a local modem, as well as obviously, of course, the EAP 610 uh, TP-Link Wi-Fi 6 access point as well. Now, if you are interested in any of the products that you've seen today, uh, go to the description below. Links are all in there, everything that we've used uh, today. Um, and as always, if you did like the video, 
please don't forget to either leave the like, uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, and of course, if you hit that bell icon, you'll learn to load any new videos.